On a gray evening of a gray century, I ate an apple while no one was looking. A small, sour apple, the color of wood fire, which I first wiped on my sleeve. Then I stretched my legs as far as they'd go, said to myself, why not close my eyes now, before the late world news and weather? How do you feel about that? Uh, honestly, kind of, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, I mean, off the bat, I think it's very calming, uh, in my opinion, it's very... Yeah, like the idea of um, just like kicking back and like close my eyes now. Like it doesn't seem like a, it doesn't seem like a death kind of thing. It seems Mm -hmm. more of like an actual kind of like literal sleep or something like that. Mm -hmm. The the first part is kind of like they're talking about all the gray and I ate an apple while no one was looking. And And like I don't really know what to what to. Yeah, I feel like there are just like a lot of a lot of things that we can look at here is like the subject, so to speak. And I mean, obviously you have the speaker, but I mean from there, like I think what we really need to narrow down is what exactly is he trying to talk about mm-hmm. in the message. And I think um, something that we could be looking at in ha- terms of how to do this would be tone, because that's something that's really easy to identify, just a simple like positive or negative. So I think that, that could be like a good jumping off point. Yeah, I think it, it from the surface level, it's, it's pretty easy to understand, but just because you can kind of see what he's doing, it's pretty um, straightforward in terms of what he's doing, but for the, the symbolism behind it and, and the reason yeah. of why all these words that he picked are significant is yeah. I think what we really have to look at. Yeah, I mean, especially since, I mean, like, he talks about, like, the apple at first, and then it, there's kind of a big break. Mm-hmm. You know, there, it's almost like two poems in a way. Yeah, exactly. the thing about the apple, and then you have him talking about, I stretch my legs, mm-hmm. and then he's going to close his eyes. So I think that what we need to do is we need to figure out how they tie into each other. And, uh... I think, I think that'll be good. Yeah, so I think that that's probably what we're going to be tackling first, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Okay, so uh, last time we were here, we rated ourselves a five in terms of understanding this poem history, but I think we might have been a little bit overconfident. We've kind of been humbled by some... Yeah, a little uh, grounded. We, we've, after a couple of readings, we realized that we don't actually have a grasp of the poem as much as we thought we did. So um, well, Realistically, we'd, we'd rate ourselves at about a three. Yeah, so three we're going to read it again well. real quick. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. All right. On a gray evening of a gray century, I ate an apple while no one was looking. A small, sour apple, the color of wood fire, which I first wiped on my sleeve. Then I stretched my legs as far as they'd go, said to myself, why not close my eyes now, before the late world news and weather? So the first thing that we did is that we kind of read over the poem and saw what it literally meant to get a better understanding of it. So what we uh, drew from it was that it's um, about uh, someone eating an apple and literally he eats, he, before he eats the apple, he wipes it on his sleeve, and then afterwards he stretches out his legs, closes his eyes, and this is all before the late world news and weather, so you can assume that it's a little bit later in the day that and, he's uh, doing this. One thing that we did kind of catch and that was a little bit interesting in terms of the literal meaning was at the end of the first stanza, it says, while no one was looking. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of, it's kind of, it gives it like an air of mystery. So we're kind of trying to work through exactly what that means in terms of analyzing the poem. The other big thing we did was tone, and uh, this is another area where it got a little bit ambiguous. He's talking in the beginning about a gray evening of a gray century, and gray, it's not exactly a happy color, but I mean, it's not it's necessarily, not negative. it's not super negative either. Yeah. And then he keeps going through, and he talks about the apple, and um, we just, we were having a lot of trouble really getting a concrete idea of whether or not it was a positive or a negative tone, and that especially became true at the end, after he switched from talking about the apple to about... The, him stretching his legs. So that's something that we're going to be looking at more next time, I think. Uh, yeah, we're going to be focusing on the juxtaposition of the two sections of the poem, uh, one of him talking about the apple in the beginning and then at the end where he talks about himself. So we're going to be going over that, and the next time uh, we'll see what we can draw from the poem again. Welcome back, guys. Um, We've been reading this poem for a couple weeks now, and uh, we think that we might have made some progress. Yeah, our last uh, rating for ourselves was around a three, but after doing some stuff, we're up to about around a five, five, six area. But what was that stuff that we did? Yeah, now you're about to find out. All right, so what we were trying to do is we were trying to analyze the first bit of the poem. On a gray evening of a gray century, uh, I ate an apple while no one was looking. So we were trying to think about, like, what was the significance of the apple? And um, there are still a lot of options, but I think that just the fact that we have those options is kind of 
uh, helping us out. Yeah, so, so what we did was we uh, just kind of uh, researched what apples usually represent in literature, and we found that they could oftentimes represent uh, either sin or temptation, or is there any other ones that you... Uh, knowledge, I knowledge think, Knowledge is up. a good one, yeah. Sin and temptation were the big ones, and then... Um, and then we were thinking near the end when uh, he's talking about how he stretches legs and closes eyes. We were trying to think of like those kind of ideas might connect to that portion of mm. the poem. So Dom actually had a really good theory about the temptation. Yeah, it's kind of like we kind of I've kind of focused on the bottom half of the poem where it says, "Why not close my eyes now before the late uh, world news and weather?" So he's he's obviously wanting to not watch the late news and weather because he's closing his eyes to it so maybe it has something to do with being tempted by the late news world and weather and uh that also goes back to the beginning where it talks about on a great evening of a great century and what we have to really figure out is when this poem was actually written just because we uh, give us a little bit more background information we on know it. based on charles simic that it was probably written well it was either written in the 20th or 21st century so that um and it's not like a well, I mean, maybe it is a huge difference, I guess, depending on who you ask. It was intended for a reason, but... Oh, uh, yeah, so we're going to research a little bit more and then come back and uh, see if we can analyze it a little bit deeper. Um, so right now, after a couple months, uh, our interpretation of the poem is uh, focused on the time period of the poem, which we have decided is around the 20th century, around the time Charles Simic actually wrote it. Yeah, it's actually very interesting. If you study his life, he actually came from Eastern Europe before World War II, so he lived through that, and then he lived through the, the Cold War in Europe before actually coming into America. So he had a lot of turmoil in his younger life, which is why he, we think he described the century as being gray. And um, we also kind of looked into the apple a bit as like kind of him biting into the century, so to speak. So it was kind of described as sour and a very kind of ambiguous feel to it. So those were the things that we really ran with. Yeah, so instead of just focusing on like the picture uh, the excuse me the poem as like a whole we kind of narrowed it down to the one time period and um you know we came to this by kind of taking a step back from the poem and looking at the big picture and you know almost surrendering ourselves to the poem and to like simic himself really just opening ourselves up to the all the intricacies of the poem and it was very important for us to look at simic's life i think that that was actually one of the crucial yeah, things really that really opened it up to really it really big connection yeah. for the poem and us understanding it uh, and in terms of understanding it, there are a lot of things that we still have questions about. I feel like there's not really a whole lot of poems out there where you can just read it. And even if you study it for months like we have, where you can just kind of know everything there is to know about it, there's always like a little bit of a, a mystery involved. Exactly. In I mean, even though we are more familiar with the poem, there's always more questions to ask and more things to explore uh, within the poem and stuff like that. So um, if you're ever trying to understand poetry or anything like that, make sure to take your time like we did. We've been going over this for months and months and we still don't fully grasp it. And I feel like a big part of that was like the, some of the most important parts of that were just kind of stepping back and taking a break from it and not having to think about like the poem mm -hmm. constantly, not reading it back to back to back yeah, until after we understood a, After a certain it. amount of time coming back to it. It, um, was, it was really nice just You see some new light. stuff that you didn't see last time and Absolutely. that really helps. So, um, yeah. so just really don't ever give up when reading poetry. Uh, Keep plowing through it. Keep asking questions. And even when you think you got it, uh, try something new. If someone else gives you an idea and you think it's very strange, just... Exactly. Nothing's really wrong. you got to explore every single option and just try stuff out. So, um, thanks, yeah, it's guys. Been, it's been a great uh, journey with history it's by been Charles Simic. It's a quest. A quest in a, a poem in journey. itself. It's been great. So, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks for listening, I guess. Bye.